Hey everybody, John Fenn here, SupernaturalHouseChurch.org. Today asking the question that was posed to me by a, a friend and, and ministry partner who recently lost his mother. And he said, Does, do you think she's aware of us and our lives and what's going on here? And so I thought I'd answer that. It may bring some, uh, some help to, uh, and, and comfort to people to understand about the relationship between heaven and uh, and earth and, and, and the body of Christ. You may recall from a previous, um, previous video here that I did where I was in heaven and I saw a little boy and a little girl who were uh, there in heaven and the angel that was giving me the tour, my angel said, uh, you know, that their parents are still on earth. But there were multiple generations around them, like 12 people, uh, total 14 people. And, uh, and I commented that the parents weren't there. And he said, he said, there's one body. He said, Ephesians 3.14, he said, where Paul said, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom there's, uh, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And he explained that it was just one family. And so you may recall from that, so, so going off of that, what does... Um, what does that mean for us today? Well, let's give some examples to ask the question, do the people in heaven know what's going on in earth? There's three scriptural examples at least that I can give you an example. And the first would be from, um, well, of course, Hebrews 12.1 says that we have now therefore seen that we have so, so surrounded with a crowd of witnesses or a cloud of witnesses in the King James Version. Uh, let us therefore run the race, you know, uh, lay aside every weight and every everything like that. So Hebrews 12.1 says, therefore seeing that we're surrounded with a, such a cloud of witnesses now he's talking about hebrews 11 and in hebrews 11 he mentions noah or abel noah uh, abraham sarah moses many others that he refers to like the widow raised uh, whose son was raised from the dead after he died in the field while working with his dad and he referred to uh, isaiah uh, having been cut in two by Manasseh, and he talks about all these people of faith, and he says, therefore, in Hebrews 12, 1, seeing that we have such a cloud of witnesses, let us run our race, let us lay aside every weight and everything. So there's a cloud of witnesses around there. The question is, how much are they aware? A cloud of witnesses would imply they are watching. But is there any other scriptural evidence of this? Uh, if we are one body in Christ, then doesn't heaven know what's going on here? And aren't we somewhat aware of what heaven is doing? I mean, isn't that what our lives are all about? Aren't our lives about being in prayer and saying, Father, what do you want for, for my life? And what do you want for other people? And when we have impressions to pray for people, isn't that a, an awareness of what heaven is trying to do in another person's life and in our life? Isn't there some sort of awareness of what we, that we are aware of what the Father wants from heaven? And isn't heaven, therefore, aware of what the Father wants for us? Well, in 1 Samuel 28, verses 7 through 19, King Saul has lost his kingdom. The Spirit of God has left him, and he's gone to, to anoint uh, David, and Saul is near the end of his life. And so he, because God's not talking to him, he goes to a witch at Endor. Um, and so the witch, who is used to calling up a familiar spirit, uh, says, uh, you know, she does her little potion, whatever, and then she freaks out. She's totally, totally blown away and freaked out because she actually calls up accidentally for her intent and purposes, the prophet Samuel, who had died some years before. And, uh, and, and Samuel talks to Saul about his life and about the upcoming battle and about how Saul was going to lose his life in that battle. So Samuel was aware of what was going on in Saul's life. And it should be noted that, that Samuel and Saul knew each other. They were not related, but they knew each other. They knew each other's lives. So, so there's an awareness there that, that Samuel, even from death, was aware of what was going on here on earth in, in King Saul's life. Now, a second example would be Luke chapter 9, verses uh, 28 or so through 36, at the transfiguration, when Jesus took Peter, James, and John up onto the mountain and was transfigured before them, became glow, you know, glowing, bright, white, pure light. And it said there was Elijah and Moses, or Moses and Elijah appeared with him to talk about his death, which would happen in Jerusalem. Now, the reason Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus is because Moses represents the tabernacle, the Old Testament law, the sacrifices, and he would have spoken to Jesus about the types and the shadows of, of the tabernacle and all of that that Jesus would have to accomplish. And so Elijah represented the prophets and prophecies. So he would have gone through the Psalms, he would have gone through Isaiah 53, he would have gone through all the different prophecies about Messiah. And together, the law and the prophets, Moses and Elijah, shared with Jesus about his upcoming death in Jerusalem. 
Now, that gives an indication that Moses and Elijah knew of what Jesus' life was like, what was going on in his ministry, and so they shared based on that. So that's a second example. A third example is a little more out there. It's Revelation chapter 6, and it's verses uh, 9 through 11. And when the fifth seal is broken, uh, the apostle John, who's caught up into heaven, sees multitudes of people who'd been martyred for their faith. And they are crying out before the throne of the Father God, saying, How long, O Lord, until you avenge us, until you avenge our deaths? And it was told to them, not, not quite yet. There are more that are going to be martyred. And when the fullness is done, when it's all done, you know, the Father will take action. And the point is this, that these people under the throne or around the throne of God are calling out, how long until you avenge us? Meaning that they are aware of what's going on on earth. They're aware of their lives. They're aware of what's happening. So these are three examples of knowing, you know, that heaven is aware of what's going on on earth to some degree. And notice in each case that like with Moses and Elijah who knew of Jesus' life and everything, and with uh, Samuel who knew of Saul's life, these are, thing, these are major events. You know, Jesus about to go to the cross and King Saul about to go into his final battle and what was laid out. And certainly in the book of Revelation, um, you know, chapter 6 with the people who had been, had been martyred and everything. These are major events. So, so there's a precedent there where heaven knows what's going on in our lives, for instance. Uh, and then there's, there's a testimony that we have all around us through the ages. And probably you have experienced this. I know my wife and I have at major events like funerals, at, uh, or not funerals, but deathbeds. Uh, when a person dies, also uh, at weddings and uh, sometimes at birthdays, I'll hear testimonies. I mean, I've known the Lord over 40 years and I hear testimonies and they're just all kind of compiled in my brain. But people will say this, that they'll go to a wedding and they'll say, you know what? I don't know how, but somehow I feel like my mom was there at the wedding, was watching. Even though she's been gone now, you know, for 10 years, but somehow I just feel like she knew she was there watching the wedding. You know, and people will say things like this, like, you know, I just feel like grandma and grandpa are, are just aware. They're, they're right here at this birthday party and they wish they could be here kind of thing. They're observing. And so people have these kind of testimonies all the way through that they become aware that at least some of the time, the Father allows those in heaven to be made aware of what's going on here on the earth. Now, in the larger picture, I also believe that because we are one body, they know uh, what is going on in the body of Christ and what the Holy Spirit is doing throughout the earth and everything like that because it's all got to be coordinated. If you, if you think about the return of Christ and you, how the dead in Christ rise first and how heaven is being prepared as a bride uh, for her husband, you, there has to be, just by the nature of things, a coordination between heaven and earth. So I encourage you, and, and a lot of times I think the world, you know, gets a hold of things like this. The Father and his great goodness doesn't always fit into our Christian, Christianese, you know, Christianity talking and language and culture and everything. But I think in the world sometimes they, they, they feel the presence of somebody or they, they think, you know, they don't know what to do with it. If it's a, it's a supernatural thing, if it's a ghost, if it's a whatever, I don't think they, they fully wear. And I realize a lot of that stuff is demonic. But I'm saying that if, if there is the demonic, there is also the true. If there is the counterfeit, then there is the real. And my point is that there are examples in Scripture where people from heaven knew that Hebrews 12 one says we're surrounded with a cloud of witnesses, which means they are watching. Now that doesn't mean they're going to watch you take a bath or go to the bathroom, but they are watching in the sense that they are aware because they're in heaven. They know what's going on in the body of Christ. They know what Christ is doing in his body. And, and there's, there's great comfort in that. There's great comfort to know that, that your mom, your grandma, your, your dad, whatever, whoever's in heaven, that there's, there's an awareness there of your struggles and what's going on. I think that's what led to, has led to some errors, like in the Roman Catholic Church, praying to the saints and stuff like that. That's pure idolatry. And, 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 and praying to Mary and stuff like that. I think that's taking that off, of, off balance is what's led to some of that error. But the point, truth is, that because they're part of the body of Christ and because there is just one body of Christ, according to Ephesians 3, 14 uh, and 15, then therefore it is only right and logical that they are aware, at least in some part, of what's going on. That brings me great comfort to know that it's like there's still a oneness there. Those that are in heaven are still connected to us. Those here on earth, we are still connected to them. So it gives a lot of peace and a lot of comfort in that. And I hope that you'll see those examples in Scripture of, of proof that at least at, at some, certain points through history, People were aware, people in heaven were aware of what's happening on earth. And that it helps explain too why sometimes you felt like, oh, I think mom was aware of that graduation or mom was watching that or, or you know, somehow I just know that they know about this wedding that was going on. So anyway, I hope that gives you peace. New subject next week. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.